Hey, welcome to Pete's Kitchen. Today we're using the Grambo knives, uh, Russ, to make little potato bits. Um, that's, that's it. You need potatoes to make it little bits. You need some oil, some good oil, use this garlic oil, yummy. And, uh, and just some Italian herbs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the potatoes into little bits. We're gonna put them in the air fryer and we're gonna have potatoes to eat with some oil and herbs. So, cooking. You've probably noticed I'm like being pretty wasteful with my potato bits. I just want nice, as skinless as they can be chunks. That's just because I'm serving it to children. And um, the rest is gonna be worm food, so it's actually not a waste at all. Mixing bowl. Oil, garlic oil. Just dried Italian herbs, doesn't matter. Mixy, mixy. And we use these air frying sheets. Piece of double bay air fryer and half and half. Alrighty, here it is, here it is, the uh, the Russ. It's designed by Kane Granbo. Uh, he's an Australian man who uh, used to run a really funny little Instagram, kind of like a funny onion type site for knives. Uh, and that's how I sort of got acquainted with him. And then he messaged me about a year ago now saying, hey, I've designed a couple of knives, do you want to have a look? And I had a look and uh, I gave some feedback. They're already really good. And then these came in November for me to have another look at. And I was like, well, I'll do a review this time because I've got my, got my mojo back to make videos. So, yeah, I'll make some, make some review of this. This is, this is me sort of trying to figure out other ways to, to show it for this shot. I'm thinking uh, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll close it up again and, and put it in my hand and maybe I'll show you the end of it. And, and then I'm thinking, nah, no, I'll do it later. Spydica Stretch, this is my favorite knife at the moment. It's probably been my favorite knife for a while now. It's my all around kind of garden knife. As you can see, it's it's lived, lived a little bit. Very fun, fun, really sort of reliable knife. You can spidey flick it, spidey flick it, spidey flick. Just kidding. Um, yeah, great knife, about the same size. And it's why I like the Russ. This is kind of my size sweet spot. It's not too big, it's not too small. Just fills me hand and uh, the stretch is it's a favorite. And then, ooh, here it is, here it is together with the stretch. Funny watching this back while, while I'm narrating it. Here it is with the stretch. See, they're about the same size. Let's show it next to some other knives. What have we got next? It's a fistful of buck, 110. Fistful of buck. Uh, a knife that I keep on hand for size comparison purposes, pretty much because it's a you know it's a knife that everyone knows the rough size of, I think, at least. Uh, so stubbing out smoothly to the fistful of the rust, which you know, again it's a similar size, a little bit shorter in the handle. Here's an old favorite, the TRM Neutron 2. Probably my favorite knife. A little bit smaller, but for an EDC carrying the jeans every day. You know, pretty good little blade, very slicey. I like it a lot. One of my favorites. 
Uh, do I like it more than the Rust? Yes, probably. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, it's my favorite. Oh, forgot I had this one. Thought I'd get that out. I put it aside. I said that can come out in the next video. That's the BK40, the folding K bar. So it's got the K bar fixed blade handle with an AUS8 blade. Ooh, but it's you know it's a nice little nice little thing really. And I reckon it's a pretty good looking knife. Probably never really choose to carry it. It's a bit too big and beefy, but it's fine, I guess. And lastly, what am I going to show you? Lastly, oh, it's the Almar Eagle. What a treat to see the eagle. I think this is the best looking knife. Yep, simple as that. The best looking knife, I think. Maybe looks slightly better without the swedge. That's the things. Alrighty, and because I can hear already the comments about uh, our Chinese M390 and whatnot, let's put a new edge on this guy. I've been using it just with the edge that Kane sent over. Uh, let's put a brand new 17 degree mirror polished uh, KME edge on the thing and see how much rope it cuts. That, uh, that should uh, test, the, uh, test the metal of the steel. Uh, metal in both senses of the word. Ha ha ha, little, little joke there for you. I'm still on the stones and I've probably been going for about an hour. So it's this is, I think my stones are sliding slightly worn now, but um, it's uh, feeling like some pretty hard steel. So uh, let's, uh, I'll be very interested to see how this one performs. Uh, just about to move on to the polishing. Blood, just for good measure. Forgot I still have potato <laughs> resin on the outside. <laughs> potato resin. <laughs> anyway, I need a bit of a hand with some WD spray. Or just a cleaning spray. <laughs> God, that's a good looking knife. And I must say, that's a pretty good looking edge. Let's see if I can read uh, some wanky uh, literature off of it. How to die. An ancient guide to the end of life. Figure one. The author preparing to die. <laughs> yes, that is a confidently mirrored edge. And uh, looks terrifically sharp. Fuck, I don't have enough rope. I'm going to have to do this tomorrow. 
I'll leave everything in situ and I shan't cut anything further with the knife until the steel test happens. <sighs> Alrighty, nothing worse than running out mid-test of the twisted system on the roll. So, got lots of spare. It's probably a bit, uh, bit presumptive, but um, better to be shaved from shoring, eh? Shaved from shoring. Right. High seating position. It's been a while, and these usually hurt when it's been a while. So just to be clear, we've got a 17 degree mirror polished edge. You saw that yesterday. Uh, we've got a um, twisted sisala rope, 10 millimeter thick. Same rope I've been using for going on five years now. And we've got a very sharp paper slicing edge. We're gonna cut with about this much of a knife. Usually the part that sort of occurs naturally to cut with. We're gonna cut the rope into this board, which again I've been using for maybe five years now, easily. Um, it was once a whole board, did you notice? Didn't used to have the stain on it as well. Now we're gonna cut into that until the knife no longer does that and starts to hiccup on the paper. At that point, I say that the uh, the test is over and I assign the number of times cut as the sum, you know, the score for the steel and edge combination that we've been using. So, and as I always say, it ain't perfect, but I ain't a robot, I ain't a terminator. Not a, not a rope cutting machine, uh, so this is the best I can do for you. Anyway, a good score for M390 with this angle would be, you know, something over 400 would be acceptable, and anything over five or six would be getting towards the, you know. Hey, that's pretty good. Let's check it out. get in the way so I sort of have to do this weird like overhand hold so the jimping always kind of hurts my finger a bit anyway <laughs> We're at now. I usually stop in increments of 100 with this, with the higher end steels and with the lower end stuff. I stop in increments of 25 or 50 just to, yeah, so I don't, so I can narrow the numbers down. But once I'm over 400, I'll stop in lower increments as well. Ooh, there we go. So 290. We're at. Did it zero? Righto. Still going, you can give another 25 to 650. See how we look. Feeling the roughness, and you know the 25 to 675. Right, 
675. Yep. We've got a definite stoppage. Definitely a repeatable stoppage. Either diverts the cut on the paper or stops entirely. Um, but yeah, very minor. It's still very much a sharp edge. 675 passes, 17 degree mirrors, mirrored polished edge. Uh, that is the result and it is a fine one, a good one even. So yeah, pretty happy with that. That's, you know, the basic thing I guess you want to know straight away is it, is it really M390, which, you know, Best Tech are obviously a fine company. So. Don't really have to worry about it not being the steel they market, but sometimes you do worry about it if they've treated it correctly or if they're just kind of making so many of these knives. They just put them all in a giant oven in the same, put them in the same oven as all the other all the other steels, which might be slightly different. But I'm pretty sure they're not doing that either. I think, I think the industry over there has probably figured out that there's a lot of semi-autistic people um, fucking around with the knives on the other end nowadays. So I think those days are gone, at least from the bigger bigger companies. So yeah, pretty good overall result. I've had M390 do higher, but I've also had it do much lower before as well. As I said, I'm happy it's M390 if it cuts over 400 times after all this stuff that I've been doing. Um, it's, then it's probably just generally if it's if it's you know lower on the on the hardness scale or whatever. So overall though, good M390. Endorse it. No worries at all. Uh, so yeah, that's a little you know little, little thing that this channel does. That's uh, you know that uh, now you've seen it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to use a knife for is a bit more of a fine task. I have gall wasps on my um, citrus trees, and uh, they require, well, you used to just cut the whole limb off, but now you have to just expose them. So a gall wasp is like a little bug that burrows in under the surface of your green, you know, developing citrus, and then it lays all of its eggs under there, and they just make it makes this makes the tree look like it's got arthritis like there's real sort of lumpy nodules all over it so um what you do is you go around the bark and um well not all, you don't completely ring it obviously but you go over the most affected parts and just expose them to the light and the air which kills them so we're going to do that so as you can see here this is all very sort of lumpy and not how it's supposed to be I'll show you some um, excised gall wasps uh, maybe on the screen now. I have cut off a couple of these. It didn't have any foliage coming up. It doesn't do the tree like horrible harm. The tree still obviously grows and lives. But um, so what you basically need to do is just sort of shave down the surface of the, uh, of the galls that the tree makes. And you can see all little dots in there. That's all the wasp lava and just doing this makes it much less hospitable in their form because they require the the bark to protect them so the tree won't die from this obviously I'm not going to do it across the whole tree either but um Pretty gross. Imagine if that was living in your in your muscles, you know. Pretty nasty business. Trees they put up the lot. So obviously you're not going to do the whole the whole thing because you would ring the tree and, and it would cause some serious harm to it. But the tree you can obviously just grow back this bit in due course. But exposing all these wasp lava long enough to to kill them. You can also use a potato peeler for this, but last I checked, I don't reveal, review potato peelers, so I guess we're doing it this way. Because otherwise what happens is they just move to a different part of the tree, they'll hatch out of here and then they'll start, they'll go and grow themselves in some nice soft green stuff again, so. And these tree, this tree is probably a bit shorter and smaller than it should be at this, you know, time and its age so all right so overall i really like 
this knife. It feels a bit like how a zero tolerance knife feels, but with the addition of having a really well geometrically ground blade. It feels got a nice hefty clunk when it flies open. It's got even those sort of looks of those older ZT style knives, the, the lighter ZTs, not the big old heavy ones, but it's got that sort of moment in time for me. Lots of thought going behind it. I love how the clip has a little naked part under it so it goes in your pocket well. I love the holes. I love the see-through pivots. I think that's really cool, really unique. Generally the blade shape and the grind and the steel is all working in really good harmony with each other to make a very usable knife. It's a knife that feels very top spec, like everything's really well assembled and put together, but it also actually cuts well as well thanks to that grind. It could have been really easy to just stay flat grind. Most people don't actually use the knives, they just carry them, whatever. Uh, I like that he's gone that little extra. Do a hollow, although it's kind of not what's on trend at the moment, or is it, I don't know. Do a hollow so when people want to cut with their super fancy, you know, immaculately assembled knife, it does cut well for them. As well, this guy will cut the cheese really, really well. So, I don't know. Um, I have, yeah, a, a good a good vibe about this knife. I think it's something. And it's been a while since I've had anything like this. You know, the titanium frame looking knives. Yeah, there's a lot of them around. I just feel like this one, this one speaks to me a little bit more. Maybe it's just because I like the guy or whatever's going on there. But I think it's pretty, pretty, not too controversial to say that it's a lot of good here. And if you're fatigued by titanium framework knives, then there's probably not much I can say about that to you, but this is enough for me to make it an enjoyable knife to use and carry and admire and whatnot. So that's the review. Like it a whole bunch. Put together well. Steel's fine. Thumbs up from me. Alrighty, that's the Russ. Also, front flips, I forgot to say. There you go. Um, pretty cool, hey? If you if you like that sort of thing, it does that sort of thing as well. I will see, see you in the next video. Goodbye. Oh, slightly disturbing. <laughs>